Thank you for staying with us here on I-24 News. An ongoing raid in Saint-Denis, a suburb of Paris. This is what we know so far. The streets seem calmer, at least quieter this morning, literally. After morning of gunshots and explosions, we've heard that for at least an hour there haven't been gunshots ringing out throughout the area. At least two people reported killed, including a female suicide bomber who detonated herself after police entered the apartment. The identity of the other casualty is still unknown. Five people were arrested in this morning's raid, three in the apartment and two others nearby. The raid was targeting the mastermind of Friday's deadly assault that killed 129 people, that is Abdelhamid Abaoud. St. Denis, the area of the Stade de France, which was also targeted in Friday's attack, there were two explosions that were heard outside of the stadium. One man speaking this morning says the people were staying in his apartment, but he had no idea who they were. I found out that it's at my house and that the people are holed up in my flat. I didn't know they were terrorists. Someone asked me to do a favor. I did it. Someone asked me to put up two people for three days and I did them a favor. It's normal. I don't know where they came from. I didn't know anything. If I'd known, do you think I'd done it? And with us here in studio are I-24 News reporter Anna Arenheim and Maya Magid. Thank you for being with us. Maya, first thing, a prosecutor in Paris already released a statement about this morning's events. Yes, uh, the Paris prosecutor's office just released a statement saying that five people have been arrested as a result of the police raid in Saint-Denis this morning. Uh, three of those people were inside the apartment. Two others were arrested separately, a man and a woman, though their identities have not been revealed. Uh, two other people, uh, the prosecutor's statement also said that uh, the, uh, the family members of Omar Ismail Mustafa and Samia Mimour, two of the Bataclan suicide bombers, have been released after they were held by police for questioning. Uh, the standoff, there's apparently a standoff, ongoing standoff going uh, with one other person, an unnamed uh, assailant in the apartment, although this is not confirmed. Dozens of people have been evacuated from the area, but some, uh, most residents have been told to stay indoors. And we're now going to the area where I-24 News correspondent Jonathan Sashadani is standing by giving us live updates throughout this morning. Jonathan, we're hearing that there's at least a lull in the gunfire and explosions that were ringing out throughout the area in the early hours of this morning. That's right. Earlier on, gunfire and explosions. 90 minutes of automatic gunfire was heard, explosions as well. And it's believed that when the police and the military did raid that apartment, they thought there were five or more people of interest to them inside. A female suicide bomber blew herself up. There are also reports that she first attacked them with a Kalashnikov firing at them. Now we know that there is a female casualty. Presumably it's her. Uh, we also know that there are three arrested, the Paris prosecutors of the apartment, and two from outside the apartment elsewhere in Saint-Denis. So that's five arrests. There are also unconfirmed uh, by the prosecutor's office uh, reports of others injured and no actual specifics over those two. And it seems we have lost Jonathan. We will go back to him in St. Denis as soon as we regain that. And Anna, I want to come to you about the suspects that were in the apartment saying that this raid was to target the mastermind behind the attacks that killed 129 people, and that's Abdel Hamid Abaoud. He's been known to authorities for some time now. Yeah, he's actually been linked to the Marseille terror attack, which happened a few years ago, which uh, killed a number of Jewish uh, students. Um, he is known to have been in Syria and gone back to Belgium, Belgium sorry, and apparently returned to Syria. And he was featured in the Dabek magazine, which is the Islamic State's English language magazine, um, their seventh edition, which was published uh, right after the Shelly Hebdo terror attacks. And it's very likely that he may have returned once again to Europe, and that is what security officials think. It's not sure whether he has been arrested. There are conflicting reports that he's been arrested following the raid, uh, arrested alive, which would surprise me, uh, seeing as how the woman ex detonated her suicide vest. I would imagine that Abaoud would have also been wearing a suicide vest and would have exploded himself rather than be captured. So if there are these five suspects who were arrested, you are saying he was likely not one of them. Uh, uh resorting to not being taken alive by security forces. Yeah. Now, there were also uh, reports that one of the attackers, who earlier, we believe, had fled to Belgium, may be in this apartment as well, and that is Salah. It's very likely. It's, you know, we can't, we can't know. Um, but if he fled to Belgium, then he must have had help. It's, 
now known that there is a ninth suspect, which police are searching for. He's still unnamed. They did yeah. release a photo of him last night asking for anybody who recognizes him to come forth with any information regarding who he is and where he may be. Yeah. And this man may have helped him escape to Belgium. It's also possible that he is still in this apartment that was targeted, which is only about 1,500 meters away from Stade de France. And of course, still trying to find out who exactly was in there. We do know that at least two people were killed, one of them a female suicide bomber who detonated herself after police entered the apartment. And according to our correspondent, Jonathan Sashdati, who's in Saint Denis, they may, she may have opened fire on them with a Kalachnikov when they entered before blowing herself up. Jonathan is back with us from Saint Denis. Jonathan, we apologize. You were broken up in the middle of your sentence. What is the area looking like at the moment? Well, this is not what Saint-Denis normally looks like, uh, besieged by press and the military and the police. And French people aren't used to seeing the military on the streets of Paris. This is something absolutely extraordinary here. But there are trucks bringing many troops here and taking them away, moving people around constantly. You can see behind me police vans, armed police, armed military, showing that this is a joint operation uh, on that flat, where there are still said to be two people left inside. We don't know if among those arrests was Abdel Hamid Aboud, or if he may be one of the ones still inside the apartment. And Jonathan, people living nearby, as this in is a residential neighborhood, were asked to stay inside. Have you seen anybody on the streets or gotten a chance to speak to anybody? Well, at the moment, most people are staying inside their homes. There are two very small groups uh, gathering either side of where we are now, which is taped off. Uh, they're being held back. The police are encouraging them to not be there, to go home. Crowds aren't gathering particularly in any, any uh, real sense, because people know that there's an actual danger. If they hadn't heard it from the warnings they were given, they can see it from the armed military and the armed police around them and the constant coming and going of ambulances. There are many people who want to be caught up in the middle of that scene. And Jonathan, the city trying to get back to a normal way of living, but obviously this morning that is disrupted as well. Schools in the area were closed. Trains coming in and out were stopped. Not any sort of normalcy that we were expecting or hoping to get back to in the last 24 hours. That's right, and Parisians will be hoping that this isn't their new sort of normal. But so far over the last week, we've seen those coordinated attacks on Friday, the manhunt that, under, they, that they undertook since then to try and capture uh, the people on the run first, one, then two, they said, people still on the run, and those behind them, the mastermind uh, himself. But now we can see that as these investigations carry on and the raids continue, this could be something that Paris has to get used to for some time to come. Jonathan Sashradati joining us throughout the morning with live updates from Sons in the as this raid continues, possibly one more suspect hauled up inside this apartment. Meanwhile, panic spreading across Europe. Yesterday in Germany, no explosive devices were found at the Hanover Stadium after police canceled the friendly between Germany and the Netherlands due to security threats. The stadium was evacuated shortly before the match, as initial reports spoke of a possible ambulance packed with explosives that was found near the stadium. The threat was later called off. This was the second match canceled due to security concerns as the friendly schedule between Belgium and Spain in Brussels was called off as well. Of course, Brussels also the scene of a manhunt for one of these attackers over the last couple of days. The German interior minister explained why the match was canceled. Indications of a threat for today's soccer game have grown stronger in the early hours of the evening in such a way that the federal security authorities and myself, after carefully weighing in all the pros and cons, have urgently recommended to call off the friendly for the safety of all people. The cancellation of the game was very late. That was because that it was not possible to gather all the indications and do a proper assessment any earlier. And ABC News has more on last night's events and Germany and a friendly match that did take place, showing the friendly ties between the French and the British. Police sounding the alarm and ordering people to go home. A reported bomb threat cancelling the soccer match between Germany and the Netherlands. Police found nothing but the German team not taking any chances. After playing in Paris last week when the suicide bomber struck. Meanwhile, in London, where France played England, a powerful show of unity 
Prince William laying a wreath for the Paris victims and some 80,000 Englishmen singing France's national anthem. Back in France, authorities are now confirming they are searching for a second fugitive, possibly the ninth attacker. This amid the frantic manhunt still underway for Salah Abdeslam, the alleged eighth attacker, Salah. his brother pleading for him to surrender. And just a day after France declared war against ISIS, Russia is also launching airstrikes, believing a bomb brought down that Russian passenger jet. Here at home, with ISIS warning Washington, D.C. is next, and authorities convinced one of the attackers posed as a refugee, at least 29 governors say people fleeing Syria are not welcome. And House Speaker Paul Ryan is calling for a pause in the president's plan to allow 10,000 Syrian refugees into the U.S. And Maya, there are some updates coming yes. in, obviously more information coming in by the minute. Yes, there are unconfirmed reports now that there may be three people dead, three suspects dead, although this is not yet confirmed, so I, we can't say for sure. Uh, reporters at the scene are saying that they haven't heard explosions in at least about two hours, so things seem to be calming down, although the operation is still ongoing. Uh, apparently, there is one person still holed up in the apartment, and there's a standoff between police and security forces with the person. There's no confirmation as to this person's identity, though. And, of course, after we found out that one of the suspects inside had a detonative explosive belt on her, this is a sensitive situation going in, hoping that she, whoever's in there does not have explosives and detonates themselves. Possibly, I'm assuming they evacuated the building, but not causing any more injuries. And, Anna, going back to the Islamic State, they have used social media as one of their primary weapons, not, of course, counting physical weapons, t in order to convey their message and spread it to these homegrown terror cells. They have, and as I reported before, uh, they have hijacked the hashtags used by uh, supporters. Um, and the interesting thing now is that you have Anonymous, uh, which will yesterday released close to 7,000 accounts including emails and the passwords to those emails of IS supporters and recruiters. And you have anonymous accounts also um, releasing the identities and their home addresses and telephone numbers of alleged IS recruiters around the globe. And of course, now the question is, how much can Anonymous actually do? They did declare war on the Islamic State, as they put it two days ago, saying, you attacked us, this is war. Their slogan, we do not forgive, we do not forget. But targeting just the social online media, they, they released another video yesterday in which they were saying, world leaders, you don't know what to do, step aside and we'll take over in this fight. How much can they actually hurt the Islamic State? They can't really hurt them physically. Um, accounts are going to get suspended by Twitter, as they do all the time, and they're just going to go up again under a different account name. Um, Anonymous also said in their, in their release of the, of the names that they have said to, to Western intelligence services, if you want, we will help you. We will give you our information. Now, again, they acknowledge the fact that once they take down and identify these individuals, it's also going to make it harder for U.S. and Western intelligence services to gather more information. So it could be counterproductive to what these governments are trying to do. Obviously, now France and Russia taking the forefront of this after Russia yesterday confirmed that, yes, their passenger jet was downed by a terror attack. Yes, Putin confirmed yesterday that the plane was down by a terror jet, and there were reports that two airport workers at Sharm el-Sheikh had been arrested, though afterwards the interior ministry in Egypt denied this report, so it's not sure that it actually happened. Uh, Putin has vowed to really punish IS and uh, uh, up their airstrikes, and yesterday there were some significant airstrikes in Raqqa and Syria. And just to recap what is going on this morning, a raid in Saint-Denis in suburb of Paris. This is what we know so far. Streets seem calmer after a morning of gunshots and explosions. Our reporters and reporters at the scene saying they haven't heard any gunshots in the last hour or so. At least two people were killed, as Maya said, possibly a third, but that is still unconfirmed. One of the killed is a female suicide bomber who detonated herself after police entered the apartment in which they were holed up. As of right now, 
about reports of one another suspect who is in that apartment. That is why this raid is still ongoing, even though it seems as if it has quieted down in the streets. The identities of the other casualties, one, possibly two, are not yet known, whether they are security forces or suspects. Five people were arrested in the morning raids, three of them from within the, an apartment, two of them a man and a female who were on the streets nearby. The raid was targeting the mastermind of Friday's deadly assault, Abdel Hamid Abaud, still not sure whether or not he was in that apartment. And as Anna had told us, he would not go alive, so he may be the one left. We will see what happens with him and whether or not he is in there. Overnight, French and Russian air raids continuing, and according to a monitor, they killed 33 IS jihadists in the past 72 hours since these raids intensified over Syria. We are going out for a short break, and we'll be back in two minutes with all the latest. Thank you for staying with us here on I-24 News. Ongoing raid in Saint-Denis, suburb of Paris. What we know so far is that at least two people were killed, including a female suicide bomber who detonated herself when security forces entered an apartment in which they were holed up. The other person who was so far killed, reports of two that we're not sure who exactly they are yet, whether or not they are security forces or they are suspects who were in the apartment. Five people were arrested in the raid, three who were in the apartment, and two who are on the streets nearby. And Maya Yusef, you have an update for us of what's going on. Um, yes, I've been reading reports that the main suspect, the mastermind behind Paris attacks, Abdel Hamid Abu Oud, has not been arrested. He's not among those who has been arrested. This is not confirmed yet. There are also reports that anti-terror squads are cur currently conducting thorough searches of the building to make sure that it's not booby-trapped. And uh, some people have been moved to a temporary sh shelter in the town hall. Um, as well, transport uh, to the area has been suspended and schools will remain closed throughout the day. And, of, and now, now we're going live to, uh, on the phone to Jog Leuken, uh, the editor of the local Berlin newspaper. Thank you for being with us. For having me. You know, last night, security scare at the Hanover Stadium. Still, details not really clear as to what had happened. Reports of this ambulance packed with explosives and then the security force coming out and saying it was a false alarm. Can you clarify the situation a little bit? Uh, well, it, uh, it would be wrong, I think, to say it was a false alarm. Mm -hmm. that, that was a local newspaper reported that there was a ambulance full of explosives, but that was never anything said by uh, officials within Germany. When they were asked at a press conference, they refused to confirm or deny that report, but at the same time they said they confirmed that they hadn't found explosives at the scene. And this morning the police have just um, confirmed that they are, they've now finished their search operation in Hanover and they still haven't found explosives or made any arrests. So it would be, it, it certainly, it would be too strong to say that it's the whole thing was a false alarm. Uh, they, that, that's quite the contrary. They say that they have very concrete evidence that something was going to happen, but they refuse to give details, um, citing not wanting to spread panic in the German population and also not wanting to compromise their sources. So we're all still to, at this moment in the dark, and it doesn't seem like we're going to get much clarification in the near future. But at the same time, the German Interior Ministry is is uh, in no way backing down on 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 its reasons for cancelling the match. And it does show the heightened security and the security alert that Germany is on as long as well as the rest of Europe. Is there any sense in the streets of Berlin, Hanover, Munich, that there are added security around in case something does happen? Uh, I can only. Uh, speak from, from the perspective of Berlin at this, cent uh, at this time, no, I haven't noticed any extra security on the streets. There has, the uh, German finance minister did, however, this morning mention the, pos the possibility of putting uh, soldiers onto the streets of Germany. However, I think that's a long time off that other members of the leading coalition have, of the governing coalition have strongly rejected that idea. Um, at this stage, not there's no general extra security measures. 
And is there any sentiment among the German population that they may want extra security measures, whether it be metal detectors at the entrances to football matches or bag checks at the entrances to shopping malls? It's too early to it's too early to to say. Uh, I don't think there's any there's there's been an, an, enough people asking these questions yet to to have a uh, firm answer on that. I think there is definitely a sense of tension in the bigger cities in Germany, but um, Germany isn't a country that has that has suffered uh, is Islamist terrorism and it still cherishes individual freedoms. Um, to the extent that I think those type of measures at the moment are still unlikely. Jörg Loikin, thank you very much for joining us from Berlin, editor of the local Berlin newspaper. And Anna, you said you have an update for us about what's going on with the Islamic State back in Syria. Yeah, there are reports coming out um, that local commanders in Raqqa and high officials of the group are now moving to, Ra uh, to Mosul in Iraq to get away from the um, increased airstrikes by the Russians and the French. Um, that again, the Peshmerga forces and the Iraqi forces also cut off uh, key routes from Raqqa to Mosul when they took over, when they retook Sinjar a few days ago. So it's going to be hard for IS to move all their families and all their men to Mosul. Again, um, moving now to Libya and Sirte, which is another IS stronghold in the North African country. There are reports that France might target IS there also. Um, again, Libya is not so far away and is known to have been one of the uh, jumping points for many migrants going into Europe. And seeing as how one of the terrorists um, pretended to be a migrant coming via Turkey, it's very likely that now France is going to look to Libya and to North Africa to stop uh, that threat from crossing into Europe once again. And a monitor in Syria said that French and Russian air raids killed 33 Islamic State jihadists in the 72 hours since those air raids increased. As you said, they are moving their commanders and their militants out of Raqqa and into Mosul. So we will have to wait and see how the Russians and the French react to that in regards to airstrike. Those could possibly be moving as well. Of course, yesterday also reports coming in that Russia was using naval assaults to target Raqqa. Well, earlier, I-24 News was joined by Julie Lenard, the political advisor and terrorism expert to talk about further threats and security cooperation. We are looking at, at a different kind of threat uh, than, um, you know, a, a decade ago, really, because they have moved to um, attacks that are very easily planned, you know, with weapons, with small explosives, um, small groups, sometimes uh, just one or two people engaged in these terrorist activities. And obviously, this is very difficult to detect for law enforcement agencies because, because all of these sort of interactions you have uh, when, when someone's planning another 9-11 is not really taking place. So I think um, after what happened in Paris now, there will be a lot of discussion going on in Europe what needs to change to, to deal with this new threat. We have to be careful when it comes to intelligence uh, sharing with Middle Eastern countries, at least, uh, well, well, Israel is a different method, but, but with other countries, because we, we've known in the past that uh, the Iraqis have uh, um, warned us about uh, threats, and they turn out to be nothing. So they, they, are not, they don't have the most reliable record, if you know what I mean. Right. But I think we need a lot more sharing between member states of the European Union. There has been a lot of criticism of last days. Um, that, you know, they are still sort of more fighting one another and, um, you know, spying on one another than cooperating with one another. And uh, what we've seen in Hanover last, uh, uh, last night, actually, right. in Germany, perhaps is, is a sign that things are changing, because we do know mm -hmm. now that apparently it, it was the French um, police, um, the French law enforcement agencies, that tipped off authorities in Germany about this imminent threat. And Maya, new updates coming in from Saint-Denis. Yes, residents in Saint Denis are now saying that they're hearing explosions and possible gunshots um, for the past half hour, basically. Uh, this after two hours ago, Justice Minister, French Justice Minister Christian Taubira said the raid was almost over, but it appears that there are ongoing explosions. And Saint Denis mayor has also just said live on television now that there have been no civilian casualties in the raid so far. So those who have been killed, the two or three people who have been killed, are suspects.
This is their security forces. Of course, this is still ongoing. One suspect said to be still inside an apartment in Saint-Denis, a suburb of Paris, a northern suburb of Paris, also where the Stade de France is located, one of the scenes of the coordinated attacks across Paris on Friday night in which 120 pe pe two, uh, 29 people were dead. Excuse me. This morning, ongoing raid. This is what we know so far. At least two people were killed, possibly three. One of them, a female suicide bomber who detonated herself after security forces entered the apartment they were in. The identities of the others still unknown. Five people arrested in the morning raid, three of them in an apartment, two others, a male and a female, on the streets nearby. Reportedly, the raid was targeting the mastermind of Friday's attacks, Abdel Hamid Abaoud. It's still not sure whether or not he was in the apartment and whether or not he was arrested. Part of these arrests, Saint Denis, as we said, has closed off all its streets. No schools this morning and trains to the suburb were stopped. We are taking a break and we'll be back with live coverage throughout the day from Saint Denis, Paris, and these latest raids.